Every day millions of people watch billions of videos on social media. Some people do all kinds of nonsense to stand out and become famous. So nowadays, it has become commonplace to be disgraced in order to become famous. It's even called Herostratus Syndrome. In short, the idea of being famous no matter what. The person who gave this syndrome its name was Herostratus. Probably the dumbest person in history. Here is the story of Herostratus, who single-handedly destroyed one of the seven wonders of the world to become famous. The Temple of Artemis, one of the seven wonders of the world, was built by Croesus, the king of Lydia, famous for his wealth. Construction began in the years before Christ in Ephesus, with no expense spared, and took exactly 120 years to complete. Countless artists and architects worked on the construction of the Coltlin. Sculpture sculptors exhibited their most beautiful workmanship and created their works. They competed with each other to put it in this temple. And finally it became one of the seven wonders of the world. A masterpiece, the pride of ancient Greece. The temple is 115 meters long. It consisted of 127 marble columns, each 18 meters long and 55 meters wide. Merchants and visitors could not hide their amazement at such a gigantic structure. Even the ancient Greek poet Antipater of Sidon described the majesty of the temple as the proud Babylonian war. The walls over which chariots pass, the statue of Zeus and Alpheus, the hanging gardens, the Colossus of the Sun, and I've seen the high pyramids with their gigantic workmanship, and I've seen the vast tomb of Mausolus. But when I saw Artemis' house on the clouds, all the other wonders lost their luster. I said, you know, outside of Olympus, the sun has never looked at anything so magnificent. The temple of Artemis is almost the entire temple. It was the most sacred shrine that the people of ancient Greece looked upon with love, except for one man, Herostratus. Herostratus was an ordinary man from the lower class living in the temple. He was not rich or noble, but rather a forgotten man from the lowest rungs of society. He seemed to be a doomed person, an obsessed person, and he wanted to be famous, even write his name in the history books, and not to be forgotten for centuries to come, because his money didn't have the status or the skills to make him a household name. He had to perform an act that he would be remembered for, and he had to do it in one of the seven wonders of the world, just to be famous. He decided to burn the Temple of Artemis next to it, so that he could burn the man who destroyed the beauty that destroyed such beauty. The whole world would know, and his name would be remembered for centuries to come. On the night of July 21st, 356 BC, Herostratus secretly entered the temple. Although the joints, some of the decorations and the roof were made of wood, Harris ignited these wooden parts, and in a short time, the Temple of Artemis turned into a giant fireball, the fire illuminating the darkness, the huge columns that carried the temple toppling one by one. In fact, the Temple of Artemis, built over 120 years with the labor of thousands of people, is the result of the stupid act of a man who wants to be famous. Within one hour it was raised to the ground. Herostratus was immediately captured by the guards, and the people of Ephesus were furious. Although Herostratus wanted to lynch Herostratus there, it was decided to hold a public trial, and during the trial, the chief judge. When Cleon asked why he did it, Hieros replied, I burned the temple of Artemis on my own. I couldn't share this victory with others. I went up all the steps of fear one by one. I lived every step of it to the bone, and it's over. First was the fear I felt when I first thought about what I was doing, but that fear disappeared because I knew I was going to gain fame and fortune. Two, he caught me inside the temple, smearing pitch on the walls and igniting it with kindling. A few strokes took away that fear. The worst was the third one. The temple was on fire. The ceiling was cracking. The pillars were falling. The bullets were tearing people to pieces. They came screaming and tearing their hair out to see the fire I had lit and I got over it quickly, next to the burning temple. I climbed to a height and cried out, Hey, listen to me. I burned down this temple. I am Herostratus. They heard me. They suddenly became silent. 
There were only the sounds of the burning temple, and then they started coming towards me, and I saw the flames in their eyes. And that's when I heard the fourth fear, the fear of death. And it was the weakest because I don't believe in death. I'm Herostratus. I burned down the temple of Artemis for ages. But you, Chief Justice Cleon, who will remember you? What Herostratus did in court was not a defense, but a challenge to history. Of course he was sentenced to death, but that would not have been enough punishment for him. It was necessary that he didn't achieve his goal, that his name should never be mentioned again. For this, the Damnatio Memoria was appropriate, and anyone who uttered this name was to be punished by death. Herostratus tried to erase his name from history, but the Greek historian Strabo. Theopompus did not omit such an event in his works and gave the name Herostratus to history. They made a note, but in time this prohibition was forgotten and the name of Herostratus has survived to the present day. The burning of the Temple of Artemis led the people of Ephesus to question their religious values. For years, the people of Ephesus have questioned why the goddess Artemis did not protect her temple. They finally found a logical answer to this question on the night of July 21st, 356 BC, when the Temple of Artemis burned down. Alexander the Great was born to the goddess Artemis, who was also a midwife in Ephesus that night. They thought he was going to Alexander's birth, and that's why he couldn't protect the temple. Alexander learned about this when he came here at the age of 23 and felt indebted. He wanted to rebuild the temple, but the Ephesians refused. Only a few columns remain today from the Temple of Artemis, which was destroyed and rebuilt seven times throughout history.